I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, oh, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. And I tell you what, we've got some good things this week. Matter of fact, I'm just going to go to the website, which is, of course, D-R-B-I-L-L dot C-C, as it says on the screen. The C-C, of course, stands for com <laughs> computer curmudgeon. I don't even know my own tagline this week. Computer curmudgeon. Wow. Anyway, <laughs> we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. By the way, later today, for me, you know, this is, as Todd Cochran likes to say on his program, Geek News Central, this is as live as it can be. <laughs> So it's not really live. But for me, later today, I'll be on Todd's Saturday morning tech show. Now, you may say, Dr. Bill, uh, are you recording this on some other day than Saturday? Well, no. I'm recording it on a Saturday morning for me in my time zone. Time zones. But Todd is in Hawaii. Yes. And so for him... Our time, the Eastern time of noon, will be 9 o'clock in the morning. How odd is that? So it's like time travel. It's all timey-wimey. Anyway, the point is, I will be on the Saturday morning tech show at noon, my time, which will be 9 o'clock in the morning, his time. 9 o'clock in the morning is already passed for me. This is just weird. It's a time zone thing. What can I say? Anyway, the point is, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. I'm just getting all confused. So, let me go into some of the items that we have this week on the netcast. And the first item is new service for Amazon Prime members. Now, I got an email from Jeff Bezos himself. Well, okay. All Amazon folks did. So last week I said they were Facebookians if they were on Facebook and Netflixians if they were on Netflix. So now we're Amazonians if you are an Amazon customer. Okay, that was lame. Anyway, he said, Dear customer, I have big news for Amazon Prime members. We've just signed a deal with Fox to add a broad selection of movies and TV shows to our unlimited instant streaming service later this fall. The new additions from the Fox library include 24, Arrested Development, EX-Files, Ally McBeal, and so forth. Lots of Fox shows will be available. And you know I'm an IPTV kind of guy. Yes, so I'm pretty excited about this. Amazon Prime members. Now, I'm not an Amazon Prime member. My son, the Game Master, is. See, he got a special deal because he's a college student. <sighs> anyway, but I sneak in on his sometimes. So, <laughs> maybe I'll take advantage of that. Anyway, next item, very important item for those of you that use eSword. That's e-sword.net, which I'll put right here on the screen. Now, here's why eSword is so cool. Those of you who know me know that I'm also a minister, and I preach the gospel from the Word, which is the Bible, okay? That's just something I do. And so you see all the Bibles back here, lots of Bibles. Tux is sitting right in front of several. Anyway. The point is that E-Sword e -sword, is an awesome electronic Bible. And the cool thing about it is Rick Myers, who wrote E-Sword, wrote it for free. He gives it away. Isn't that awesome? Now, there's certain Bibles, um, different translations, that the company that makes 
the Bible, did not release it into the public domain, and so some of those particular ones you have to pay for. But the King James and the Strong's Concordance and all the good stuff that's in the original, uh, you might say, stock eSword is really cool. Now, the problem with eSword, if you want to call it that, is that it is written as a Windows program. Eh, we'll forgive him. <laughs> it's the biggest market, so what can you say? Anyway, eSword is now available on the Mac and on Linux, this is the big news, using Code Weaver's Crossover. Now you may say, well, Code Weaver's Crossover is just the commercial version of Wine, Dr. Bill. I mean, of course you can use a Windows program on Linux if you use Wine. Yes, but here's the cool thing about this, and that is Rick Myers has made a deal with Code Weavers to get a 25% discount off of the commercial version, the Code Weavers crossover official version, and it's really cool because basically once you buy Code Weavers crossover and install eSword, you not only have eSword for your Mac and Linux, but now also you have Code Weavers crossover for other programs. In other words, it doesn't discriminate. It doesn't only run eSword. So it's a good deal. It's a great deal for you folks that may not care about eSword, but do care about running Windows programs on Linux and the Mac. Dude, so that's cool stuff. So go check it out. There's a link right here in my uh, blog. <laughs> my mind went blank on what it was. Anyway, point is, of course it's a blog, point is it is codeweavers.com slash VIA slash E dash sword. I'll put it up here on the screen, that way you'll see it. Anyway, I'm pretty excited about that. That's cool. Next item. Tomorrow is, tomorrow is, I wrote this obviously. I wrote this on September 27th. Cut me some slack. Anyway, tomorrow's launch of the Kindle Fire. Kindle Fire. Get it? Kindle Fire. Yes. As someone said in a in a comment about this particular article, I think it was this particular article, they said, oh, I get it, Kindle Fire. So now they can have a Kindle Fire sale. Yeah. So anyway, on Wednesday they did, in fact, announce it. Dude, which is cool stuff. Next item. Check it out, the article because there's not a lot to talk about other than that they announced it. Okay, anyway. Next item, VMware demo of App Blast at VMworld. Now, I'm just so excited about this, I just can't even hardly stand myself. And you probably understand that. Anyway, the thing is here, this is a demo of a technology that's not even in the alpha stage yet. Okay, in other words, it's a ways off, so don't get too excited. I got really excited because here's the thing. Most of you know that I am a Citrix administrator, and I am a VMware administrator at High Point Regional Health System. Okay, and so I, as I've said before, I work with virtualization or whatever on the back end, meaning the server, and on the front end, meaning the applications. Or back and yeah, okay, we'll call it that. Back and front, yeah, that'll work. Okay, so sometimes I confuse myself. Anyway, point is that I'm virtual on both ends, so I'm not even there. Yes, I've used that joke before. It's kind of lame now because I've used it before. Anyway, point is that I cross posted this from the Vertzine blog. By the way, vertzine.com, go there for all the news about virtualization and cloud computing. Okay, and we also have the Vertzine video netcast. You can check that out as well. I just stay very busy. Okay? Anyway, the thing about this is Citrix, as you may know or may not know, Citrix in effect sort of virtualizes applications. It basically allows you to publish an application that is not installed locally on a PC because it runs it from the server and displays it on the client. Okay, got that? Now it's it's a little complicated to set up and manage and it's very expensive to set up and manage. Okay, 
Uh, and I've been a Citrix administrator for over a decade, longer. So I know the ins and outs of Citrix very well. And that's kind of my primary function in High Point Regional, other than I also hit up VMware. Well, VMware just released this information about the direction that they're heading about App Blast. This is their code name for it right now, App Blast. And here's why it's so cool. HTML5, whether you know it or not, is changing the world. It's changing how we publish video. It's changing how we basically deal with graphics on the web. And it's going to turn the web browser effectively into an operating system. So it really isn't going to matter what you're running on your computer, whether it's Linux or Mac or Android or whatever, as long as you have an HTML5 compliant browser. Okay, got that? Now, take the HTML comp compliant bra HTML5 compliant browser, and uh, 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 get my tongue working, and then this software that they demoed allows you to, from your browser, click on an icon and run like Excel, PowerPoint, Word, other applications. They even ran in this demo. If you click on the video and watch it, which I encourage you to do, click on this video and watch it that I have on the blog and it will show you, get this, this is odd, they've got an iPad. He's sitting there working with his iPad and he clicks on the icon and he runs Photoshop. How wild is that? Okay, I mean Windows applications running displaying on an iPad and yet running through HTML5. I'm telling you it's going to change the universe. So anyway, I'm excited. You can tell, huh? Anyway, check it out. Really, watch this video. It'll amaze you. Okay, next item. Amazon Fire Tablet. Better order early. Yes, remember I mentioned the Fire Tablet before? Well, turns out that the Fire Sale, yes, is probably a reasonable euphemism here. Boy, using a big word anyway. <laughs> because they released it at a price that is much lower than they expected to release it at, than they were expected to release it at, which is two, they thought $250 was going to be about the right range for it to be in. They released it at $199. This thing is a 7-inch Amazon uh, Android Basically, what Amazon did is they took Android and they modified it heavily to customize it for their tablet. So I guess we'll call it Amazon Android, for lack of a better operating system, on this tablet. And dude, it looks really cool. For $199? I mean, that's, that's cheaper than I paid for my G tablet, which I got with a super deal from Woot. I still like to say Woot. <laughs> anyway. Boy, I'm in a weird mood. <laughs> so, order early. Now, they haven't been officially, like, they're not shipping yet, but you can order early now. So, get your order in there. Okay. Next item, Dropbox is awesome. Now, you know that I have Geek Software of the Weeks, right? Dropbox has already been a Geek Software of the Week. But I use Dropbox so much, and it's so cool, and I enjoy it so much, that, in fact... I got really excited about it all over again. I upgraded to the latest version, and it's just so cool. So I put a link in the blog here that you can click on, and if you click on that link, two things will happen. You will go to Dropbox, and you'll be able to get the software, and <laughs> it will help me get more free room in my Dropbox. I'm already up to 4 gig of free space. Dude! So help me out, please. If you haven't gotten Dropbox, click on this link, which I'm going to put on the screen right here. Click on that link on, in the blog and download Dropbox, install Dropbox, and you'll help out the doctor. That's a good thing, isn't it? Oh! Geeks off of the week! <laughs> yes, indeed! As the drum roll is reminding us, it is time for the Geek Software of the Week, and the Geek Software of the Week this week is Evernote. Yes. 
And as I promised, the Geek Software of the Week this week is very, very special, awesome, and I have a video of it to demonstrate it to you right now. Okay, today we're going to be looking at the Geek Software of the Week, which is Evernote. Evernote, as you notice, it says, remember everything. Well, that sounds cool. I'd like to remember everything. I don't know if I can really do that, however, <laughs> even with Evernote's help. <laughs> but it's as simple as clicking download now. And then, of course, you have to click, in my case, keep because I'm using Chrome. I love Chrome, by the way. Notice it's downloading over here. You can see the progress. Do -do 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 -do. Now, the whole idea of Evernote is that as you're using different computers and even different devices, whether it is uh, a Mac PC, a Windows PC, an iPad, iPhone, Android, Android tablet, any of the devices that you may have at your fingertips, you can have Evernote running on that device. And all the data is actually stored in the cloud. The cloud! And so because of that, you have access to all of your thoughts, ideas, inspirations, as it says there on the screen, in a single place, which I think is rather cool. And so I had heard people like Veronica Belmont from Techzilla talking about Evernote and how she can't get along without it. And then I went on Google Plus and I was talking about what's your very favorite utility and that mine was Dropbox. Because Dropbox is kind of, it's the same idea really. The idea that you can have a file storage area out there in the cloud and then you can use that area on any computer you happen to be on. So now I'm going to go ahead and crank it up. We'll move the screen up there so you can see it. See I'm recording a portion of the screen and so I'm having to move all these things around. Yes, I accept the terms of the agreement. I will install it. This, by the way, is on my brand spanking new supercomputer that I built, which I use for um, the netcast. And so we're using good old BB Flashback Express to record our screen and finish. How cool is that? And of course, it appears behind the screen once again. Now, it has a video that you can watch to uh, explain Evernote, but rather than do that, I'm just going to kind of look at it here. I already have a username because I've already installed it elsewhere. This is the first time I've installed it on this machine. Assuming I type my super secret password correctly, <laughs> which I did, I'm amazed at that. I'll squeeze this up in here, and let's just make it take up the entire screen. There we go. Now, so I've only got two notes in here. The first one is a welcome to Evernote, which you can see um, that that was the first time I opened it and looked at it, uh, which actually isn't the right date. <laughs> I just noticed that because I just did it yesterday. That was 9-30-2011, but that must be when they posted it in the software. How interesting is that? But anyway, that's kind of the welcome note. And then I created another note that has Faith and Victory Church messages. I have a list of messages here uh, from the church. And you see it's a fairly long list uh, going every month of 2011. And so anyway, the point is you can bold. You can uh, use uh, buttons. You know, you know what I mean by buttons, the little bulletin point buttons, uh, basically format it however you want, and store it out here in the cloud. And uh, you can have tags. You can also do things like if you go to a website, you can save the website as a note. Uh, not the whole website, obviously, but the page you're looking at. Come on, give me a break. Anyway, but you can save things as notes, and then you can do searches on those notes based on the content, which is really kind of cool. And uh, you can also share your notes and print them, and there's all kinds of other things you can do. But it's basically kind of neat. It's kind of like having your own little electronic notebook out there in the cloud. How cool is that? So I'm going to um, I'm going to minimize this, and 
the idea here is, and I tell you what I'm going to do. It's going to be hard to do because it's down here in the tray, which you can't see. But Evernote resides down here in the tray, and I can bring it up whenever I want to. I can grab web page information. Um, you know, you can save pictures as it shows here uh, from across the web and just do all kinds of cool stuff. So anyway, this is the Geek Software of the Week. I trust that you will enjoy using Evernote. I tell you, once you get used to things being in the cloud, um, it's just so convenient that I don't know what we're going to do without it. So let's never get rid of the cloud, shall we? Okay. Now, I was telling the story about how I found Evernote, and I mentioned in the video that, in fact, uh, Veronica Belmont of Techzilla uses Evernote. She loves it. And I was getting around to saying that, in fact, uh, someone else had reminded me about Evernote. Because I had asked the question, I'm trying to get to my Google Plus login here. That's what I'm doing. I'm clicking around. If you're going, what's he doing? He keeps looking at the screen. Well, it's because I'm trying to get somewhere. Anyway... <laughs> Now I'm finally in Google+. Plus. By the way, if you haven't gone to Google+, Plus, I'm beginning to warm up to it. Okay? Everybody was really excited about it initially, and I was like, yeah, well, yeah, whatever. But, uh, you know, I'm pretty cool with Google+. Plus now. Okay, here's the post that I posted to Google+. Plus. I said, what is your favorite, quote, I use it every day computer utility? One of mine is Dropbox. If you never downloaded it and set it up, Please use this abbreviated link, and I gave the link that I gave you earlier, so I'd get credit. So, I got an email, well, post. I got a Google Plus response back from Steve Lee, who said, uh, basically, that he thought that Dropbox was cool. He said, I agree with you. Though, he said, Evernote, for me, is neck and neck between Dropbox and Evernote. So I thought, well, hey, I'll have to check it out. I remembered that I'd heard Veronica talked about it, and so I checked it out, and it's cool. And as Steve says here, it syncs all of his notes, his links, his pics across all his devices. So that's cool. And so I downloaded it and installed it, and it's really awesome, as you saw in the demo. But I never finished the story about telling you about Steve telling me about it. So, so while I'm telling you news... I'll go into my email. I just keep bouncing around here on the screen. But I'll go into my email and I will share something with you very, very interesting. Once I find the email. Okay. Steve H. sent me an email and said, Hey, Dr. Bell, I love the podcast, but I can't get the show anymore through my Zoom. The error says, We can't update this podcast or channel because the feed isn't formatted correctly. Well, I was shocked. This is my shocked face. I was shocked because I thought, dude, I use Duracaster for my feed, and I'm the maintainer for the Duracaster project. So I thought, dude, if something's wrong with Duracaster, I need to fix it. So I went and checked the feed with Feed Validator. By the way, if you have an RSS feed and you're not sure it is formatted correctly, you can go to feedvalidator.org. I'll put it right here on the screen. Go there. Enter your feed string, and it will report back to you what any issues are. Well, it reported all kinds of issues on my feed, and the reason is not because Duracaster itself per se was messed up, but because I had moved to a different server, which had a different version of PHP and a different version of Apache, and it was actually a much later version. And so it pointed out a problem that there was, is, had, was because I fixed it <laughs> in Duracaster in that the get ID 3 library was old. I know that's entirely too technical, but some of you can appreciate that. Anyway, I downloaded the new get ID 3 version, which is 1.90, that's the new stable version. I added that to or basically deleted the old get ID uh, directory and added this new version in 
and it fixed it. That and I needed to set the time zone within php.ini to be my time zone. Okay, it was blank. Okay, because of the, it doesn't matter. It's, the reason was is because the new version of PHP and it blanked out my PHP and I file and it's all very complicated, but the point is I fixed it. Set the time zone in PHP I and I, use this new version of the get ID 3 system, and it now works. So it's now fixed. Bottom line. So if you've been having problems with the video feed, this feed that you're watching right now, <laughs> on your iPad or your Zune or whatever device you may be getting it from, it is now fixed. And if you haven't been getting my videos, this may be the first one you've had for a while, and you're going, dude, I'm glad it's fixed. You know, Go back and watch the other ones. Catch up. Catch up. Okay. We're just about out of time, which is probably a good thing, because I think I'm out of items. Am I truly out of items? Let me look. Do, 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 do. Don't want to shortchange you. Oh, no, I've got, ooh, I have several items. Let me quickly run through them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next item. Tiger Direct is now an advertiser on drbill.tv. Now I know you probably go, who cares? You know, who your advertisers are. I don't like your advertisements anyway. Well, I'm sorry, but in order to do this netcast, you've got to have support. Please support the doctor. Anyway, <laughs> the point is that if you go to the blog, the aforementioned drbill dot cc, and you click on the link that says Tiger Direct Laptop Deal Week thing. Actually, it says best laptop deals in our history. Laptops from just two fifty nine ninety nine. These are brand new, awesome laptops starting at two fifty nine ninety nine, dude. So click on that link, and not only will you get great prices on new laptops, but of course, as I mentioned earlier, you'll be helping the DrBill.TV netcast okay so that's pretty neat stuff and I was glad that they agreed to become a sponsor of the netcast because dude I use Tiger Direct all the time that's the main place I order stuff from that's computery okay so click on that link yes and and order something you know don't just click on it and go okay I clicked on the link yeah, da, da, da. no 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 go ahead and order something <laughs> anyway last item Microsoft Security Essentials removes Google Chrome. Now you know much how much I like Google Chrome. It would be really, really bad for Microsoft Security Essentials to remove it from my PC because it thinks that it's a virus or malware or whatever. It incorrectly detected Chrome as WPS colon Win32 slash Zbot. Sure. Anyway. Chrome was inadvertently blocked and in some cases removed from customers' PCs. This is what Microsoft said in a statement. It's around 3,000 people. But, um, uh, <laughs> you can fix it, and they told you how to fix it, but this is just bizarre. Now, you know, Microsoft is not exactly a big fan of Chrome. Chrome is going up and up and up and up in terms of usage, and their commercials are pretty awesome. That's getting the more f folks using Chrome instead of Internet Explorer. So... You kind of got to wonder, did Microsoft say, uh, Chrome is a virus, let's get rid of it. Yeah, well, maybe they didn't, but it's kind of funny anyway. So I included it this week as an item. So that should just about do it for the netcast this week. I'm actually, I'm running about right on time. Don't forget to check out Todd's morning tech show, Saturday morning tech show. And you don't have to watch it Saturday morning. You can watch it anytime. You can just go to his website and watch that show. And I'll be a guest today on that show. Cool? Cool. All right. So remember until next time that the doctor is out of here.
Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillBailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.